All right. Welcome, everyone. Uh, today, our topic is Book Creator. We are excited to welcome John Smith from Book Creator to take us through just a couple of housekeeping things. Um, please keep your microphone muted when you're not speaking. Um, and please use the Q&A feature. If you're not familiar with this, it's fairly new in Google Meets. Click on the triangle, square, and circle option in Google Meet, and then click on Q&A. It's going to help me keep track of your questions a lot easier. Um, if you have the same question, you could just click like, and I'll know that more than one person has that question. Um, now that I'm working on my own, I do not have an extra set of eyes to keep uh, their eyes on the chat. So if you would please do that. And without further ado, I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to turn it over to John. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for uh, joining me today. I'm going to share. i got to figure out which one I want to do here. Hang on one second. Uh, this one. All right. I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully, everybody can see. Um, hopefully, everybody can see my book. Yes. You're good. Awesome. All right. So for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is John Smith, uh, for real. I am the iPod teacher on Twitter. So if you're on Twitter and you want to give me a shout out, awesome. If not, no worries. I'm also John Smith at bookcreator.com. So if you have questions afterwards, uh, feel free to reach out anytime. I'm happy to answer any of those questions that, uh, that you may have. I uh, taught special ed for 12 years. I was a tech integration specialist for seven, and now I'm the teacher success manager here at Book Creator. So uh, lots of webinars, lots of sales, support, trainings, uh, conferences when that was a thing. Uh, now it's virtual conferences. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, happy to be here today. Uh, married, got three kids, 10, 6, and 3, and I love golf and clean cars. So if you're anywhere near Ohio ever with a dirty car, feel free to stop on over. I'll be more than happy to, to wash that car for you. Um, and so today we're going to talk a little bit about Book Creator. And uh, like Lisa said, if you have any questions, please feel free to put those into the Q&A box. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any of those questions that you may have. And um, I think the, the basic gist is that uh, we're going to talk a little bit about getting started with Book Creator, but then specifically talk somewhat about how to use it in remote situations and how to help you. Like, you know, what, what are some of those best practices uh, for using it in remote situations? I don't know if I have best anything, uh, but I have lots of experiences and examples of what teachers have done. Uh, so uh, we'll definitely make sure that we get through that. So for those of you that are not familiar uh, with Book Creator, uh, there is uh, an easy way to, I think I'm, this is not going to show up here. Hang on a second. Uh, you don't see, do you see Safari pop up by chance? We do not. Okay, that's right. So in order to get to Book Creator, you're going to go to, I'll just do this. I'll sign out here real quick. You're going to go to app.bookcreator.com. And what it's going to do is it's going to have two sign-ins. It's actually going to have student sign-in and teacher sign-in. So if you've never used Book Creator before, make sure you click teacher, and then you're going to sign in with your Google, Microsoft, email, or Clever, uh, or however your district uh, asks you to sign in. Um, and there are a few, um, there are some accounts uh, in the district. And uh, so you, if you have one of those, then you can use one of those. But I'm going to sign in here. And the very first time you do this, it's just going to ask you a couple questions. What do you teach? Uh, what grade level? And then it's going to ask you to create a library. And once you do that, it's going to look very similar to what you see here on the screen um, without books. All right. And so the first thing I want to make sure you see is the teacher dashboard. So if you click up here to the top left, these three lines, this will take you to the teacher dashboard. And there are some really um, amazing things in here that uh, I think you'll really, really enjoy. Uh, the first is this Discover tab. And in the Discover tab, there are a lot of really great resources that you can use right away uh, with your teachers and with students. These books are all books created by students and teachers on various grade levels excuse me, and various subject areas down here at the bottom. But we also have books that were written by our Book Creator ambassadors. So books on differentiated instruction, formative assessment, high school classrooms, social emotional learning, science and social studies, just about anything you can imagine. Uh, we do have a book for. Uh, we just created this one here, uh, Creating Journals with Book Creator. So a lot of really awesome resources. So I definitely want you to check uh, all of these out. 
The other thing, uh, because we're not going to have time today to, to take a deep, deep dive into everything Book Creator. Um, and so if you've never used it before, I definitely want you to look at this Learn tab. And this Learn tab uh, has some really cool uh, buttons. And if you click any of these buttons, it'll take you to some support articles that will help you out in learning Book Creator. But the more important one is this one down here at the bottom. And this is the Book Creator Certification Program. So with this, if you click the blue button, a new tab at the top will appear that says certification. And this certification tab will bring you here and you'll see 14 videos uh, ranging from about a minute and a half to eight minutes at most. 14 videos followed by a quiz. Watch the videos, pass the quiz, and then you will become a book creator certified author. And you'll get a nice little badge that you can then put into your email or social media. Um, and what's really cool is as a, as a district level, the district administrator of the account will also be able to see which teachers have completed this program. So some districts are offering tech hours, uh, PD hours, license renewal credits, things like that. So it's really, really awesome. And again, by the time you are done with this program, it takes about an hour, you will have a deep understanding of Book Creator and you will really know what to do with it. Um, the other thing I like to do with this is to kind of throw out that challenge. Uh, we had a school district, um, Kansas City Public Schools, that with, within one month of this being released had over 300 certified teachers. So in le like a month, they had 300 teachers complete this program. And so I'm trying to find that school that's going to be the one to knock them off the, to the, the, the podium, right? Who wants to be uh, the number one school with the most certified authors? So if that's you, if you're totally into competitions, then let's, let's go ahead and do that. So those sections there at the top are definitely going to help you uh, get that really nice uh, you know, understanding of Book Creator. Now, once you've created a library, uh, you're going to invite your students to join your library. And the way you're going to do that is in the library itself, there is a little blue button that says invite code right there toward the top middle. And if I click on that invite code, then there is a code that pops up. Now, this code I will put into the chat window in case you need to see it again. But this code is unique to this library. So this is not a library that you're going to share out with your students. Um, and every library that you create has its own individual code right, for your students to join. So this is the code for this library here. And if you want, you can certainly join my library. So once you've signed into your account, you click these three lines at the top left. And then down at the bottom, you scroll all the way down to the bottom. There's a button that says join a library. And you're going to click on that. You're going to enter that code. And you're going to say join library. And once you've done that, you'll get into my library. And you'll be able to see all of the books that I have inside. So... When students do, uh, they're going to do the same thing, except they'll go to app.bookcreator.com, sign in as a student, and it's going to immediately ask them to join a library. All right, they're going to have to put that code in right away. Now, from here, uh, there's three things you can do and three things your students can do in libraries. One, they can view all of the books that you have inside your library. So if you have created books, um, instructional materials, uh, things like that for your students, they will be able to join your library and see those books inside it. They won't be able to um, edit them. They won't be able to change anything. They'll just be able to see it. They'll be able to click inside those books and they'll be able to read those books. Option number two is that your students will be able to create their own books inside your library. So if they click the plus new book button, they will have six different style options to choose from. And then they will be able to make books inside your library. My personal preference is to choose the bottom row. Uh, the bottom row is our comics book, uh, comic books section. Uh, some teachers don't think that they want to make a comic book, so they choose the top row. The reason I choose the bottom row is because the top row does not have any comic options. So like no stickers, no comic panels, none of that. So I always choose the bottom row, even if I don't want to make a comic book in like the traditional sense. All right, so. You choose a book style, and then you can make your own books independent inside that library. And then the third option is that students can collaborate on a book together. So what you're going to do underneath a book, uh, and this would you would have to turn this on for each individual book in that library, click the share button, click collaborate, 
and then I can turn on collaboration. Now we have two options. Either everybody in that library can collaborate on your book uh, together, or if that scares you, uh, which it does for some people, then you're gonna click this button that says change. And when you click change, you can choose which students get to participate in collaborating on that book. So it's totally up to you, totally up to your situation and what your kids are like, um, but everyone, or you can choose individual students. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click done, and a new icon will appear at the top of our book, and then that book is turned on for collaboration. And I thought I clicked, I may have missed the button. And I may have just, uh, let's see here, my computer's been acting funky today, so we'll see what happens. All right, there it is. So that book is now on for collaboration, and anybody that is in this library can click inside this book. I'll start to see names popping up, and then you can all work inside this book together. Same page at the same time, different pages, totally up to you. Now, in terms of um, you know best practices or things for remote and hybrid learning, I love this feature. I think the ability to have students work on the same book is very powerful. It's very similar to like a Google style collaboration. And you know, if you have kids who you know you start off in school and then things change and all of a sudden you go hybrid, uh, or if you go completely remote again or whatever the situation may be, this is awesome because no matter where you are, no matter what time it is, uh, you can all work on the same book together. Uh, my son, for example, uh, last year, this wasn't during the, the virus or anything like that, but last year the, the students were asked to collaborate on a book and do a biography about a certain person. And so the teacher went into Book Creator, put uh, student names at the top of every page and asked the kids to find their page and then make their biography on that page. So that was one example of how collaboration worked. Another thing that you can do, uh, again, if this completely scares you, uh, then have every student make their own book inside your library. And then when you're done, underneath the bo a book, doesn't matter which one, click these book icon and say combine books. And what you can do is you can just click on all of the books that are in your library, hit next, answer a couple questions. And it takes all of those books and it sucks them together into one big book, which is really, really cool. Um, and it does kind of alleviate some of that fear of, of having everybody work in you know, everybody's hands in a cookie pot at the same time. So I really, I really love uh, that feature. All right, so if I go inside this book here, um, just find a blank page and you can start working on it. So I'm just gonna add some extra pages here in case we've got a lot of people in here. And so when you go into Book Creator, um, I think what's really, really nice about this is that it is really, really simple. All right, I have learned three really important things over the last seven months of dealing with the, this, this pandemic and uh, talking with hundreds and thousands of teachers uh, across the world. Teachers are stressed out, right, to the max. That's one. Number two, teachers need help, all right? And so that's why we've been doing tons and tons of webinars to help teachers. And number three is that easy always wins. And Book Creator is super, super easy. So I think you'll find out as you play along in here uh, that, things are, that things are really awesome and, and really easy. And like I said, there are two buttons, and that's really it. Plus button allows you to add content. We've got media, comics, and shapes. And then we have an I button or the inspector. And the inspector allows you to manipulate that content that you've put onto the page. So again, for the sake of time, we're not gonna go over all of these, um, but we've got shapes. One of the things that I'm seeing a lot of during this time is teachers using shapes to leave feedback for student work. So one of the nice things about the online version of Book Creator is that as opposed to like the iPad version, is that you as the teacher can see the work that the students are actually doing in your library, which is very powerful. And what teachers are doing is they'll see the student work on the page and then they'll add a shape and they'll leave feedback, whoops, feedback and comments for that student work and they'll just kind of shove it over here to the side. And so then when a student comes back into their book, they are able to click and see the comments and then they can click and delete this if they don't need it anymore. All right, so there's some really cool features there, which I do think also um, may lend itself to another question that usually comes up 
is how do you grade it, right? Is there, does this connect to like Google Classroom? Does it connect to Schoology or Canvas or anything like that? Can I grade something inside of Book Creator and, and automatically have it dump into like a grade book? And the answer is no, it doesn't, we don't have any connection to Google Drive, or I'm sorry, Google Classroom or any online grade books. But what I have found uh, is a method that I like to use, and it works really well. Uh, and I use this with my graduate students. So when they're done making their projects in Book Creator, this is what I ask them to do. So we're gonna pretend for a second that this playground book is somebody's work. And what I tell my students is when you are finished with that work, you will know, I will go into this library every day, every couple of days as a teacher, I'll go in there and I'll be looking for new stuff. So when you are finished, I want you to mark it done. Right in front of your name, right? Or in front of the title of your book, just say done. And then as the teacher, I know that this book is ready to be graded. And so what I'll do is I'll see the word done, I'll go inside the student book, I'll add my comments and feedback and give it a grade, and then I will change the word done to the word graded. And then that way the student knows that they, can, that they have a grade for this book, all right? Now, I wouldn't necessarily do that for, um, you know, like collaborative books because then every student is able to see everybody's grades. Um, I wouldn't necessarily uh, let everybody see everybody else's grades. Oh, so an important feature here is this little uh, setting icon at the top right. And if you click on that little gear, one of the options is to allow students to read other student work. And I think that this is, I don't mind this during most situations, but if I'm gonna start putting grades in the book, then I'm gonna click this button and I'm gonna turn it off so that the students cannot see the grades that I've put in other student books. All right, but I think this, it works really well. I've used it, like I said, with my graduate classes, and I've had some teachers reach back out and say that was a great suggestion. Uh, we use it like that now too, all right? Just because, again, there's no, um, there's no syncing with any like online grade books or anything like that. There's no Google turn in button uh, up at the top. Now, those are things we're thinking about, but right now, this is the best kind of um, workaround for that. All right, great. Let's go back in here to our book. All right, another thing um, under the plus button, uh, we have media. So in the media category, there's a lot of great things. Uh, the import button, if you click on the import button, we have a Google image search that's built right in. All of these images are Google safe search images. They're labeled as commercial reuse with modification and they're all labeled as non-attribution. So these are about the safest images that you're gonna find. You just type in an, excuse me, type in an image, search, find the image that you like, click on it, hit select, and now that image gets added right onto the page. You can resize it, you can move it around. There's a lot of really cool features with those images. Another thing under that import button is maps. So you can actually pull in Google Maps, you can pull in files from your computer, so photos, video, audio, documents, PDFs, all that stuff from your computer can be also brought into your book. And then we also have a connection with Google Drive. So if you have files, photos, video, audio, that kind of stuff in your drive, you can connect and bring that right into your book as well. And then one of my favorite features in this category is the embed feature. And so the embed feature allows you to take content from other sources and add it right inside your book. And I love this because sometimes kids are really good at doing other things that are not necessarily making a, a quote book, right? So for example, uh, YouTube is the easiest way to demonstrate this. If I click on YouTube, I'm gonna pause this for a second because it's gonna be a commercial. All right, underneath a YouTube video, there is a share button. And if I click on that and then click on this button, it says embed. One of the options over here is to copy this code. Now I'm gonna copy this code, which means absolutely nothing to me at all, but I'm gonna copy that code and I'm gonna go back to our book and paste that code right inside that box and confirm the link. Now you'll see the video, the link and the title. And when you click add to book, that video is added directly inside the book. Now watch what happens. Oops, let me pause that real quick. Watch what happens when you click the play button. Oh, my audio, oh, hold on. Over. 
There we go. And in fact, it's my new 2020 Land Rover Defender. All right, so what's really awesome about this is that those videos will play automatically. No commercials at the beginning, no commercials at the end, no comments underneath, and none of that sidebar stuff on the right, which is where kids and teachers get lost for days watching things that they don't need to watch. Right, so there's a lot of really cool things that you can embed uh, into Book Creator. It's not just YouTube videos. You can embed YouTube, Vimeo, Soundtrap files, Desmos calculators, Wii Video, Padlet, Powtoon, Explain Everything. Basically, anything that has an embed code, you can put right inside your book. And I think this is awesome um, because there's a lot of great content out there that you could put into the book to front load students on their learning, to enhance the learning that you've given them in class. There's so many options. I definitely want you to take a look at embedding content into your book. Now, while we're talking about video, if I go to the plus button in media, the second option down is camera. And with camera, you can either take a still picture or you can record video. And I think this is also powerful because this is a great way to, while students are not in the physical classroom, this is a great way for you to get students to show what they're learning at home. Um, or to bring learning from the class into the house. So run around, find those 90 degree angles and show me in a video. Uh, show, go outside and make a video while you're out in the grass and talk about uh, different science topics. Um, you know, where can you find in your pantry, um, you know, like the, the number of calories and things like that. If you're in a health class, there's so many things you can do by recording video. It's just a really great way for students to bring learning to the home and also for teachers to actually hear and see what those kids are thinking uh, when they're explaining their learning. So I definitely want you to check out the video options. And then the last couple I want to show here before we um, before I go into some samples and ask or answer any questions, um, under the media tab again we have the pen tool. If you haven't checked out the pen tool and our auto draw feature, it is amazing. So with the auto draw feature, if I just try to draw something, uh, this is hideous. I'm really upset at my bicycle here. It looks terrible. But at the top of the screen, auto draw is trying to figure out what it is I'm drawing. I find the bike that I like. I click on it and it fixes my drawing, all right? And that is super cool. Your kids are gonna love auto draw. I love auto draw, and I think it's gonna be awesome. So the auto draw feature is really cool. Plus button, media, record. I love the record button because you can record the student's voice. Uh, students can record sound effects. You can record music that kids might be playing in the background uh, with their instruments. There are so many options here. And then there's also comics. And so comics, again, Fairly self-explanatory here. You click on panels, it choose a panel style, add that panel to your page, and then you can click inside the panel and add a photo from Google Files or Drive, or you can click on the camera and add a photo. And what it does is it just fills it right inside that comic panel and it makes it fit perfectly, right? So there's a lot of really cool options there. And I can see by some of the work that I'm seeing on those pages that you're all working on it, you know a little bit about it and you're having a good time. It's not difficult, right? You're making some nice pages, which is fantastic. So at this point, I wanna show you a couple of cool examples of things that I've seen uh, during this remote learning uh, experience that we are all in. And one of them is a read aloud and so this read aloud right here if I just click on this book this is a teacher who took a a book that she would normally have read for her students in class she took a photo of every page of that book and put the photos of those pages into book creator now she did ask for permission from the uh, author and the publisher to do this um, but she took pictures of the pages and then she was able to put audio buttons in. So if I click the audio, I can hear her read the page. Over the snow I glide into woods, frosted, fresh, and white. Now what's really awesome about this is not only is the teacher reading it, but when she's done, she asks little follow-up questions at the bottom. Did you ever wonder why snow is white? Click here to find out more. She has background information she's looking for. She has videos included in this book. She's got a lot of really great things to help enhance this story and really deepen that learning for the students. So I love this example. I think it's a really cool example. I don't see why you couldn't use this for um, 
uh, science and social studies textbooks. I don't see why you couldn't use this for classical literature. I think you could use this for just about anything uh, to really enhance that learning. And then the next one that I wanted to show, and again, I think this could be easily done uh, in multiple grade levels. This is clearly an elementary example, uh, but this teacher took her entire week's worth of lessons and dumped them into Book Creator. And so her students would join her library on a Sunday night. They would make a copy of this book, and what they would do is then be able to edit the copy. And so inside this book, this is what she has. Here's Monday's lessons. I want you to read this story. I want you to click the button and listen to it. Here's your grammar lesson. Using the pen tool, draw lines between the synonyms. And then so she made a, a really interactive uh, workbook basically for her students for the entire week and she did this each week uh, of the pandemic and her students really enjoyed it parents loved it uh, and again when they make that copy then it becomes interactive I can drag and drop the shapes into the right baskets I mean look at this this is certainly nowhere high on the SAMR level right on a SAMR model uh, but we def definitely just all we did was take a picture of a math worksheet from their math book put it into Book Creator, and now you just use the pen tool uh, to answer the questions. But what was cool about it was the teacher could then go in and, and review the work and leave comments off to the side like we showed you earlier so that those students uh, could see how they did and the teacher could give them some kind of grade. So there's a lot of really cool things that I've seen uh, during this remote learning time. Those are just two of them, um, but hopefully that gives you some ideas and some thoughts. So I know we're running out of time. We've got about four minutes or so left. Are there any questions um, or thoughts that, uh, that you have as we're, as we're doing this? Hopefully it was beneficial and those ideas are floating around in your brain, but uh, let me hear what you got. Go ahead and unmute your mics if you've got questions. I have a question. Yep. Uh, you say that the teacher has account and the student does account, different accounts separate, correct? Correct. So the teacher makes the main account and then the students are able to join the teacher's library that the teacher has created and that's how the students will make books. Okay, the student has to follow the, the teacher uh, account, correct? Or no? The, 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 so what's going to happen, let me log out here for a second. When you... Um, when a student goes to our site, app.bookcreator.com, and clicks on the student button, they're going to sign in with one of these options. And if they've never used Book Creator before, it's going to immediately ask them for a teacher's code. So you're not sharing an account uh, with students or anything like that. You're going to get that code, give it to the students, and then they sign in and join your library to start making books. Okay. Thank you. Thank you're you. You're welcome. Mm-hmm. April? How many books? Hi there. Um, at the very beginning, you uh, clicked on a tab that said certification, but I don't see that in my uh, screen. Yep. So if you go to the Learn tab first, yep. and then scroll down where it says certification and click on that blue button that says View Course. Once you've clicked on that button, then a new tab should appear at the top. Say that again. So if you go to the Learn tab, do you see the Learn tab? Uh, okay. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm already on something else. Okay, so Learn tab and then... If you scroll down a little bit toward the middle, there's a little blue button that says View Course. Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. All right, can you see? Is there a maximum amount of books that you can have in the library? So with our with the paid plan um, that your school some of the some purchased, I can't remember. At least you have to remind me exactly. I don't remember how many licenses you have. Um, with the paid plan, there's a thousand books, unlimited libraries. If you're just getting started and you have the free plan, it's one library up to forty books for right now. And some of those those libraries can be archived as well. So if you if you're getting close, like you have 999 books, you can archive some of those libraries, and you can make new libraries then. In a and you, it's 1,000 active books. Great. Any other questions? 
All right. Well, I just want to thank everybody for being here today and spending a little bit of time with me. Uh, Lisa, thanks for having me. Um, i got to find the stop share button here. Stop sharing. There we go. Now I can bring everything back to normal. Uh, but anyway, I just want to say thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, you know, happy bookmaking. Be safe out there. And uh, can't wait to see what, uh, what kind of books and things you and your students make. Well, John, thanks so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time. Um, please tag us on Twitter. We love to see what's going on in your libraries. Um, if you're looking for points, please register for the Topical Tuesday course in e-learning. Uh, you can earn up to 20 points this year. Each session is worth two points. Nice. Uh, only one follow-up activity. Sorry, my present has been taking a while to catch up with what I'm saying. Um, the next session will be on December 1st, and we're going to be talking about Destiny Collections. Um, some of you explored that topic this summer, but we're going to take a deep look into Destiny Collections. So we hope to see you on December 1st.